Oi. <laughs> Who am I? Uh, I'm just a guy, you know? I came down here and uh, wanted to do some woodworking in the rainforest because I was asked to, and I was a little tired of the United States in 1976, and I thought it was a great opportunity, at least for a vacation. And when I came down, I got to know the people of the island and the island itself, and I decided, eh, this is good, I like this. It's different from what I came from, and it was more the pace that I liked, and the people were just a lot more interesting than New York City, so I decided to stay. You know, I, I didn't really start until college. Uh, I think I was really a lost soul in high school. I had a, a couple of events that kind of took the wind out of my sails and I barely made it out. And I uh, got into a school in the Midwest, Creighton University, and um, did not really think that I liked business school, uh, didn't. It was the 60s, it was Vietnam, it was the counterculture. Um, and finally took an art car course in my junior year and um, made a, a sculpture out of mirrors and pegboard and mirror box. And it was sort of a hit, but mostly it was a hit for me because it was a discovery. Um, and it was just something I pursued, you know, completely, you know, 100% from then on. You know, life drawings, large sculpture, worked for artists, worked, worked in foundry and uh, after school, worked in New York City for a short amount of time for an artist. Came here to work for the arts project at Leap uh, and then opened my own welding shop just to survive. But all the time it was, you know, the art and it has been up till now. I don't know, um, it, but it is, it, is, uh, it is what I do, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's not fame, fortune, and the love of women, as Freud says, but it's, uh, but it's partially that, I would say. But, you know, now when I work, it's almost like my serotonin drip. You know, if I do something that is sincere and that is, you know, kind of successful at either discovering or completing an idea, that that's pretty good. That's pretty satisfying. That's pretty reinforcing. And it, that's what keeps me going. When I don't have that, then, uh, you know, things look very different and they don't look as bright. So the art is sustainable, you know, from a spiritual point of view. You know, I didn't, you know, Lisa did. In fact, this is the second show this year, right next to each other, where somebody else chose the pieces. And every time I do a show of my own work, which isn't all that often, I always look for what I haven't done yet and I'll have accumulated some new work and then I'll say, this is what I want to show. Maybe this is the stuff. So it's interesting to work with a curator instead of doing all the curating yourself. And they pick out stuff that they actually like, you know, that they think works. And so it's, it's been very pleasant, as it were, to sort of let go of your ego and your fear and your self-consciousness and let someone pick these pieces that you know, you like, but you just don't know how relevant they are anymore. I mean, they're relevant, obviously. A lot of people haven't seen them, but you forget that. And you think, well, that thing's been around for so long, but it hasn't, you know, and it's, it's good to get them out and dust them off and clean them up. And the presentation that Lisa put together is just terrific. So I'm very happy with that. Years ago when they were doing the uh, tech center at the university, uh, someone came into the shop and said, we need to give an award to someone that's working on the project. 
and we'd like to use recycled materials. And uh, the reason is, you know, this is a very environmentally conscious LED lead status uh, building, you know, that recognizes, you know, water usage, electrical usage, materials in the construction, et cetera, et cetera. And um, she said, maybe we can make it out of some of the debris, the scrap, the leftovers. And of course, I have a shop full of that stuff. And, you know, shortly after she left, I made this piece out of a single band of galvanized metal that was, I thought, really nice. And uh, these are very similar to it. Needless to say, I submitted the piece and they said, nah, that's not really all that great. So I kept it and it really is a good piece. But I tried, since it was just a flat piece of material, I thought, I'm gonna try and do the same thing. It's kind of a figuration, but I'm gonna make it, you know, with volume and I'm gonna make it in stainless steel. And so I made these three pieces. Each piece was an attempt to make it as good as this first one that I made. And at the time, none of them satisfied that need. I put a lot of work into them, making them, you know, voluminous and three-dimensional. But they turn out to be pretty good pieces as I look at them. And, and so that, you know, that's kind of a neat thing. But still, I go back to that original piece, and it's the one, you know, that really is the most graceful the mo for me. You know, I still haven't sold it, you know, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a good one. So the, the earlier one is the one on the right, the shorter one, appropriately so. <laughs> and, it, and it just struck me as kind of an archaic figure kind of a primitive art figure, even though it's nothing like that. It just had that feel to me. So I called that early man, right? And then the other one never intended to be a woman at all. Neither of them intended to be a, a sex thing one way or the other. And, and, you know, the second one, again, it just sort of insisted on being female, more or less, I mean, from my point of view. It wasn't like, I'm gonna make this a female or I got a man, I may as well have a woman. It just reads that way to me. And so, you know, I had to name that uh, accordingly. And it was, you know, it was kind of tough to come up with the right name. I think it's goddess, right? A lot of pieces I don't even name, but it really reads that to me. Slightly larger, slightly more volume, more elegant, less lummoxy like the male figure is. You know, all the great things about women over men. So, yeah, that's how that came up. It's nice. It's nice to, uh, to get the nod, you know? And um, I think that's what a uh, good community museum should do. It's, it's um, a moment of kind of, like you say, recognition. Um, and resolution, you know, I'm sort of at the end of my career. I've been doing it all these years. Several of these pieces are pretty old. Um, and of course I'm still making work, but it's really been in a vacuum for a lot of years because I've been in this market that isn't really ripe for this kind of work. They say all markets are local. So there's a lot of Caribbean art made here, which is smart. I mean, you reflect your environment. But I think it's uh, important to look outside of that too. And I just wasn't gonna do Caribbean art. You know, I do some work on paper and some painting that might be Caribbean, but I, I, I really am following my own path. And so that is sets kind of a distance between you and your audience. They can recognize craft, they can recognize quality, but they don't necessarily recognize relevance or how from an art point of view it's kind of innovative or sort of a discovery that's worth looking at. Uh, don't stop working. You know, if you found something that intrigues you and it gives you, like I said before, that little serotonin drip, 
or satisfies that curiosity that you might have, you know, cultivate that curiosity. Feed it and work. Just keep working and something will come from it. You may not get discovered right away, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's another matter. It's not about being discovered. It's not even about financial success. It's really about your life because it's a life process. Nina Simone, whose birthday was just the other day, had a wonderful song that she wrote about people and when they get sort of discovered in their lives. And, you know, she was just so tremendous at her craft and her music. And she talks about that early discovery phenomena and how that changes, you know, a person's life arc, if you will, and how it kind of deflates, you know, the later years and leaves a person sort of stranded in this nether world of, you know, wanting to revisit past glory or past res recognition, but really can't find the thread anymore. And, and just, there's never enough feeding you. And I know, boy, early success would have ruined me. That's for sure. <laughs> I probably, I would have taken myself far too seriously, probably. And, uh, and just, you know, it, it would not have ended well, I don't think. Um, and that, again, isn't the point. You know, it's how you live your life. What, what's gonna, what is the thing in your life that, you know, keeps you going, you know? <laughs>